India today has been getting you all the images of the havoc and devastation from day one of the Russian invasion. Images on your screen show the most haunting images from the first day of war till day 10. The next set of visuals on your screen capture the mass destruction, intense shelling and airstrikes from day 11 to day 18 of the Russian invasion. Ukraine has battled draining missiles, non-stop bombardments and air raids. Here's a look at the war rot unleashed on Ukraine from day 19 to day 24. Russia continues to rain missiles on Ukrainian cities on day 24 of its invasion. UN estimates nearly 6.5 million people have been displaced in Ukraine and over 3.2 million have fled the country. The city of Kharkiv has faced heavy damage due to repeated bombings. Fire reaches on in residential buildings as rescue teams in action try to evacuate people from the buildings. Maripol has seen heavy shelling and the city is in ruins. Charred residential buildings, destroyed commercial establishments in the city paint a devastating picture 130 people have so far been rescued from the debris of the Mariupol theater that was bombed by the Russian troops many still are feared trapped under the rubble meanwhile the Russian defense ministry released a video that shows a group of fighter helicopters firing at an airfield in a bid to capture the airfield another top Russian military commander has been killed in war Lieutenant General Andrei Mordachev commander of the 8th combined arms army of the southern military district of the Russian armed forces during a battle at Chernobyvka in Kherson. Я хочу, щоб мене зараз почули всі, почули особливо в Москві. Настав час зустрічатись, час говорити, настав час відновлювати територіальну цілісність і справедливість для України, інакше втрати Росії будуть такими, що вам не вистачить і кількох поколінь, щоб піднятися. Today is 19th March and we are in the fourth week of this war between Russia and Ukraine and we see no signs of this war coming to an end. We have been hearing of talks, we have been hearing of bombardments, shellings of civilian areas, every kind of uh, humanitarian disaster we have heard of, but this war seems to be continuing and it's fourth week now. I'm here in Kyiv in the Independence Square. I would just like to show you around how this city looks like, the center of the city in the fourth week of war. Everywhere it's quiet, there are no people around, it's like a totally deserted city and this is what Kyiv is in the fourth week of war. My colleague, Foreign Affairs Editor Geeta Mohan is now joining me live on this from Delhi. Geeta, we just saw that report that Rajesh Pawar filed for us from Kyiv. He of course says that for the past three days there's been a sort of lull in Kyiv but that is not the case when you talk about Mariupol and certain other cities. In terms of the talks between Russia and Ukraine, where are they headed at the moment, Kita? Well, again, both sides have taken a very, uh, very strong and a difficult position when it comes to uh, when it comes to the negotiations, follow me. Uh, the president of Ukraine, in a very recent statement, again said that we need to keep fighting Russia. This even as negotiations are underway, and President Putin has not announced ceasefire in the whole of Ukraine. But after the ICJ ruling, which asked both countries to cease uh, while uh, from from acting against one another. Uh, there has been certain amount of uh, re reduction in the kind of action that we've seen from the Russian side. That this has not stopped Russia from really taking action on the Eastern Front. And uh, Mariupol has been one of the worst sufferers, including Kharkiv, but Mariupol certainly has been one of the worst sufferers as a, as a city, as a town. Uh, uh, the negotiations and the 15-point uh, peace plan that both sides are speaking of, while they say there's positive momentum, unless and until there is a there is agreement on neutrality. It doesn't seem like uh, Russia is going to uh, stop anytime soon. Follow me. So the, the the ball is in Ukraine's court in many ways than one. But will Zelensky take that call of neutrality? And if that happens, would that mean political suicide for the Zelensky government? They, these are questions that need to be answered, and that's uh, one area that both sides are working on.
Right, so the ball is in Ukraine's court, Kita. You're saying as far as Ukraine is concerned, today we heard a video address uh, from uh, the president of Ukraine, uh, President Zelensky, who said that this is the time to talk, it is time to meet, it is time to talk, and he had a message for Moscow. So while Ukraine stands firm on its own position, do you see things moving forward? Because that question of neutrality, they're not arriving at that. Well, uh, Palmi, an important question, uh, because the the question of neutrality is something that if Ukraine agrees uh, upon, then it would be an uh, end game for Zelensky and Zelensky's political future in many ways than that. Uh, but the other uh, realization within Ukraine has been the fact that NATO and the West is not coming to Ukraine's rescue. While they could be sending weapons and armaments, uh, it is a Ukraine's war to fight. It is Ukraine's battle to take on Russia and to see if they can uh, keep Russia at bay, which doesn't seem to be the uh, the, the, the uh, position right now. Also, more importantly, follow me, Russia did not choose the battlefield to be the border of Ukraine and Russia. Russia chose Ukraine as the battlefield. They're well within uh, Ukraine and fighting the battle, the war within Ukraine. So for Ukraine, uh, it, uh, Ukraine is in a very disadvantaged position, even when it comes to the war that is underway within its own country. Uh, many have started questioning whether if it was a strategic miscalculation to not have assurances, uh, absolute 100% waterproof assurance from the West that they will come and uh, rescue Ukraine. That is not happening. So yes, the ball is in many ways the one in Ukraine's court, but Neutrality is something that uh, that would really mean succumbing to Russian uh, uh, Russian demands. And that certainly is not something that Zelensky wants to do at this point in time. Will sanctions continue? More sanctions continue? And will that really impact Russia right. in the manner in which the West wants it to be impacted is uh, something, again, we'll have to wait and see. Because as of now, Russia is not stopping, uh, irrespective of sanctions from countries, unilateral sanctions from various countries and from various European or Western blocs. Okay. Gita, thank you so much for putting things into perspective for us. Now, Russia and Ukraine trade charges accusing each other of genocide. Under global pressure, Russia says, in fact, is playing victim and has alleged war crime by Ukraine in the Donetsk region. Putin also accused the West of double speak. Here's a report. A day after Ukraine and its allies accused Vladimir Putin of war crimes, Russia is hurling the same charge at Kyiv. Russia is calling a missile attack by Ukraine on breakaway region Donetsk a war crime. Moscow claims the Torchka U missile fired by Ukrainian forces landed in a residential area killing 20 people. Earlier, Russian forces had destroyed a theater in Mariupol, sheltering hundreds of civilians. The attack sparked global outrage. Kyiv accused Moscow of genocide. The series of charges and counter charges continue. The Russian foreign minister has claimed the US has created several biological laboratories across countries, including Ukraine. Those laboratories are created, are being, have been created by the United States all over the world. More than 300 laboratories in uh, various countries, many of them uh, on the perimeter of the Russian Federation and the former Soviet republics, including Ukraine. Ukraine is uh, probably uh, the biggest project uh, for the Pentagon. Russia has threatened to target any cargo moving into Ukrainian territory, which they might believe are biological weapons. Any, any uh, cargo moving into Ukrainian territory, which uh, we would believe uh, is carrying weapons, uh, would be a fair game. Uh, and, uh, I mean, this, uh, this is clear, because we are uh, implementing the operation the goal of which is to remove any threat to the Russian Federation coming from the Ukrainian soil. Moscow is demanding security guarantees that will be common for Russia, Ukraine and all of Europe as part of a compromise.
with Russia changing goalposts, an early breakthrough in talks looks unlikely. Bureau Report, India Today. As Russia steps up the offensive over Ukraine, missiles and rockets rain on Ukrainian cities. But Ukraine shows immense resilience as Russia is still unable to capture a single Ukrainian city. Here's a report. This is the extent of the damage after parts of a Russian missile fell on a residential building in the northern part of Ukrainian capital, Kyiv. At least one person was killed and four injured. See the missile hit our building. All apartments are totally destroyed. I don't know where I'm going to live now, where I'm going to work. I don't know to carry on living. And who is going to help me? The emergency services said that they had rescued 12 people and evacuated another 98 from the five-story building. The missile fell. It fell down and there was nothing left of the apartment. I am barely alive myself. Yes, I am from that building. I guess I will no longer live there. A bomb arrived in the morning. Some kind of a rocket. I don't know. A projectile. I have heard it just because I live here, behind a school. So I just came here to have a look and offer my help if needed. More than three weeks since Vladimir Putin launched an invasion, Ukraine is still standing and Russian forces have not captured a single big city. But Russia continues its offensive. Four missiles hit an aircraft maintenance facility in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv, destroying its buildings. Ukraine's military says the facility was struck by cruise missiles launched from the direction of the Black Sea. Enemies strike against the city of Lviv is another proof that it does not fight Ukrainian troops. It fights population, children, women, refugees. There is nothing sacred for them. In Mariupol, a city that has been under relentless Russian attack, this is what remains of the theatre that was bombed. The theatre was serving as a bomb shelter. Since the start of the invasion, over 24 days ago, Russian troops have taken heavy losses while blasting residential areas to rubble and sending more than 3 million refugees fleeing. Moscow denies it is targeting civilians in what it calls a special operation to disarm its neighbor. Bureau report, India Today. Ukrainian President Zelensky is trying to keep up the motivation of his nation high for fighting the Russian troops. From meeting the injured civilians to soldiers to remaining defiant on his demands, Zelensky is doing all that he can. Here's more on that. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, the man of the hour, keeping the Ukrainian fighting spirit high, is motivating fellow citizens to protect the integrity of the country. The people's leader Zelensky on Thursday visited a family of injured civilians who suffered from shelling in Warsaw City. <laughs> <laughs> the Ukrainian president also met personnel of state emergency service to thank them for their dedication. Ukrainian cities are reeling under the constant bombardment by Russian hellbirds. But people of the country have refused to bow down. As talks take place, Zelensky has made his demands clear. He wants the war to end with security guarantees and sovereignty. 
He wants to ensure Ukraine's territorial integrity with real protection of Kyiv. The results of the talks will depend on how much Ukraine and Russia are willing to yield. Bureau report, India Today. Chinese President Xi Jinping told U.S. President Joe Biden in a video call that the war in Ukraine must end as soon as possible, but did not assign blame to Russia for the invasion. Here's the news report. U.S. President Joe Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping spoke for nearly two hours Friday morning in a video call where the White House said the two world leaders discussed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Chinese state media said Xi underlined that such conflicts were in no one's interest. The call comes amid U.S. warnings that Moscow had asked Beijing for military and economic assistance as the war drags on and sanctions cripple the Russian economy. Russia denies making the request, and China said the reports were false. Beijing has so far declined to criticize the Kremlin over the invasion. China and Russia last month announced a new strategic partnership, and Washington is worried that China could help Russia circumvent economic sanctions. But the fighting may have forced China into something of a balancing act. Well, what we have observed so far, it seems to be China's position has shifted from initial indifference, leaning towards more showing sympathy towards Ukraine, without openly denouncing Moscow. Yu Jie is a senior research fellow focusing on China at London's Chatham House. So China is really hoping out of this crisis that be able to maintain that fine balance. But however, the fine balance will be very difficult for Beijing to maintain anyway at the end of the day. That Beijing, because bogged down by the international pressure, that Beijing will have to show some stance and to show its capability as being a responsible power in this case. The fighting in Ukraine has added a new front to a U.S.-China relationship already at its lowest level in decades. Just before the phone call, China sailed an aircraft carrier through the sensitive Taiwan Strait, shadowed by a U.S. Navy destroyer.